Hello everyone, Dan14 Prime here. We'll do a video shout today on the latest addition to the Prime Pyre, or the Superhero Lounge as I'm calling it these days. This is the Prime 1 Studio Half Scale Arnold Terminator T800. This guy took forever to get in hand, and I've been seeing collectors get them actually over like the past year, so a very slow rollout of distribution. And from what I can tell at the time of this video, it seems like Sideshow is about the only place I'm seeing him available. And actually in stock right now, Link down in the description below. Any shopping of those links supports the channel at no cost to you. So appreciate that very much. But yeah, I've had this guy for a couple months now. You can see I've got him on display at a, a Max 150. Got the spotlights on. I'm just loving this. And I think I'll make this little three wide Max 150 sort of Terminator themed as they've announced some other one third T2 pieces to come. But this is the deluxe version. Retails for like 3000 It comes with that extra head that is actually on the figure right now, the battle damaged, whereas the regular version, which would come with the little uh, head down there on the bust right now, I'll say it's like 2300 So expensive, half-scale piece. Uh, interesting in that it's silicone portrait. So the two portraits have like a silicone skin, punched hair, the whole nine yards for that type of realism. He's got all soft goods, you know, cut and sew, jacket, shirt, pants, and everything else is sculpted like the arms, uh, the hands, and the gloves, and the boots are actually sculpted as well. And, of course, the base there. But just want to share my two cents on this piece, so let's jump in and check them out. All right, guys, so before we get into this, definitely check me out at the Superhero Lounge collectible store. That's SuperheroLounge.com. It's my growing online collectible store. You'll find that link down in the description below. Pop out there, bookmark us, and check out our growing inventory of pre-order and in-stock statues, action figures, and collectible comic hardcover books. So just kind of taking the top half probably of Arnold here, you'll see got a really nice leather jacket on. I did the leather jacket upgrade. It's like you can buy it separate, sort of like 400, 450 bucks, depends on where you get it. If you check me out on my Instagram, same handle, Dan14thPrime, down saved in my profile, you'll see the unboxing of this guy, the pieces, the pack outs, the assembly, all that stuff. I always just kind of do in my story on Instagram and then save it down to the profile. And I do have a side-by-side -side of this genuine leather jacket and the stock one uh, out there as well. But in a nutshell, I'll say this genuine leather jacket is way softer. Definitely feel it to the touch, and it gives a look, I guess, of softness as well. It's sort of like less creased. Mine, at least, was a little bit more worn. That could just be variation in the production process. It wasn't huge, but definitely the stock jacket was a little kind of blacker, uh, whereas this one has more wear through it and a little bit kind of faded of a black color a little bit more. Again, super minor, could just be variation, but I noticed it. And one of the other things is like th this jacket, the leather one, it comes with like no creasing in it. I mentioned the stock one will have not just all the lapels creased, but, but might have other wrinkles and stuff going on that you'll need to work through. This thing is like just the, the, the shape to the lapels and stuff, it's not even in the jacket when you get it. You start to do that yourself. So personally, I mean, if you're gonna spend this much on a piece, I, I like the leather jacket upgrade. You don't have to have it probably. But if you want to make it a little bit nicer and money's not an object, it will do that for you. Probably the main complaint of collectors that we've heard on this piece on the jacket is like this, the size of the lapels looking very kind of maybe, I don't know, Travolta 70s or something really long. It's debatable, but I get the point. I can see what people are saying. I will say you have some ability to manage like the fold of the lapel. Like I'll try to drop an Arnold pick up here. Some of the picks with Arnold you see actually there's a button there you actually see his lapel sort of like this and you actually see the button let me go with the other hand here it's kind of been like put in in some of how he did the movie so and you could do that too if you want to kind of do the lapel like that this one i definitely have tried to bring it in a little bit you can tighten that down and make those look maybe a bit more how you like same is true of the collar piece as well though i would say the pose makes it a little more limiting. Like the gun on the shoulder, one of the things I would have loved to have done with the piece is like give him like the popped collar through here. But with the gun on the shoulder, you like you can't do it. You can't really pop it here because it's just pressed in against kind of his back of his head and everything. So the pose kind of limits that. That probably would have helped. And I would have preferred that sort of look if we could have got a little bit of that kind of collar up in the back. So going in tight on the battle damaged face here. It looks really good. I mean, this is another area that some of the collector community is people looking at pictures for what it's worth. Pairing prototype picks versus the product release picks and complaining about a lot of stuff. A lot of keyboard warrior stuff out there like that. I will say just 
Generally, from what I've seen, everyone that's had the piece in hand loves it and is super happy with it. I'm no exception. I think it's really, really awesome. Is it perfect? No. Is anything perfect? No. But a lot of the details through the face are really, really good. And they are as good as kind of what's, what's in the prototype. A lot of the things that you see in the prototype, even like torn ears and things like that, blood drips, that nasty stuff in there dirt on the forehead and stuff, it's there. You see it in person, it's a little tough to kind of get it on the film. Like here, see, you can see a little bit on the film. In person, that looks way more smudged out in black um, than it does here picking up on the camera. So you'll notice some finer details like that. A little shadowy in there with um, being on display and with the spotlights and everything, but this head sculpt is cool. Is the hair... A little too long? Yes. I think the hair it needs to be kind of trimmed up a bit. Got the glasses here. And there's the eyes, and against that silicone kind of look. Looks strange to people. Even to me, I'd say, well, it looks a little strange, but in person, it's there. It looks good. Very lifelike eye, Terminator eye. And so I'm definitely glad I, I picked up this head sculpt. I think it looks really, really cool. The eye lights up, you swap out the bus, it's a pain because the t-shirt's probably a little tight on the crew cut. Be nice if that was a bit looser, uh, but whatever. I'm not using the light up eye anyway. Come down to the shirt. See there's a pattern in there. Got a bullet hole. There and there. Bullet holes in the uh, in the jacket. See all the all the zippers and buttons and just fine details through the jacket. And they both have it, the real leather or the synthetic. Kind of tailored and designed exactly the same. So you can see the gloves, again, sculpted, looking pretty good. Even the arm, try to soften the life off of that. The arm there, sculpted, a good skin texture and detail in there. They look very, very lifelike. And then you can just see he's got like the shotgun and thrown over the shoulder there. Displays pretty well dimension-wise in this Max 150. Again, I've got them a little cockeyed, you'll see. See the, the red plate's a little bit turned. So I guess he should, they would want them like this. But then he gets really deep with this gun, so I just kind of cock him a bit. I prefer it this way, it kind of opens him up. You see more of the chest. You still get the full face, different angles you want. So I prefer him like this anyway. Check out here the, the right hand gun, the trigger finger. Got the taped up mags. So that's all cool. Then we'll just drop down here to the pants. Different complaints about the pants. I think they look fine. I think they look good. I'm not like screen accurate kind of anal person either, but um, they work. Everything's fine for my mind's eye. Um, could they be a little bit more worn? I mean, they could It'd be a preference thing, but I don't mind them um, being cleaner either, especially the way I light this piece with like spotlights and it sort of gets some natural shadows and stuff. Part of that's kind of the trick of just displaying something like this really nice. Lighting and things like that are really going to matter. And we come down into the boots. Boots look good. Again, sculpting, you can see some of these details. Biker boot effect. You can see how the leather is and everything. Check out the boot back there. It's got like the metal spiky strap. And you can see across the base, there's all this glass that you just lay wherever you want. A little pistol here, you just sort of attach there. You could spin it different ways if, if you want. Pretty simple kind of base. Got the Terminator nameplate. Got a little spotlight down here. That's kind of... You can check that out there. And then here you get the regular head sculpt. Again, I think it's a pretty good likeness. Again, the hair may be a bit long. It's not like super far off, though. The hair in different photos, kind of weird in, in like T1, but probably a bit long, I would agree. And he's got the light up eye as well, just, you know, no battle damage. And this is, I mean, this is kind of what it is. You pull it out like that. The button back there for the light. I do not have batteries in this one. But you get this little bust as well here for the uh, the deluxe version. Just kind of display 
the heads separately. And if it helps here, just get you a bit of profile. Again, he's on display. So it's not the best sort of show and tell. Pull out 360. So there's not a lot to see from the back anyway. Just big leather jacket. Arnold butt, stuff like that. That's kind of it in a nutshell, guys. I don't want to drain it. There's some other some other reviews out there, I would say. Not, not as many as you might like, though, if you're thinking about picking this piece up. So I want to at least get another perspective out there and at least another word of endorsement for this piece. I love it. Super thrilled. I think it's the best piece in my collection, and that's not just like a recency effect either. You know, the new piece is always sort of the new favorite best piece, but... I think this guy is going to keep that for the foreseeable future. If you've got the space or you want sort of an epic piece for your Terminator collection, your movie room, theater room, something like that, definitely give this a look. Pretty limited in ES as well. So I'm sure once they go out of stock, like aftermarket will pop on it. Just too epic a movie, too epic of a person in Arnold, and really just a fantastic piece. All right, guys, so thanks for checking out the video. Again, check me out at SuperheroLounge.com, link down in the description below. We've got some epic half scales out there for sale as well. Not this guy, but some, some nice, really nice Queen Studios ones. So check those out. All kinds of other links as well. Instagram, all that fun stuff below. Thanks for checking out the video. See you next time.